Rex, this would be a good time to tell everyone that when they tell everyone to scoot in, to actually scoot in. No, that's a spiritual thing. <laughs> that's a spiritual thing. No, if you scoot in, you scoot in your mind. You go, okay, I'll sit more narrow. Yeah, it's not a bad idea, seriously, to help us out on that. But, in a short little bit, I have my good authority. We are, just so, I didn't think I want to talk about all that in there, but I should tell you that we're down to a fairly short list of major things that have to be done. One of them is paving, and that's both, there's going to also be not just asphalt, we're going to have some pavers too, so that's going to look beautiful. Uh, but, not just paving, uh, this week, but we, we have now shrubbery put in, a lot of plants and trees, and trying to get that in, and that has to be done. You can't get a CO without it. I know that sounds crazy. What? I don't know what you said, short hair. But, uh, <laughs> and so, and then uh, there's some bitsy things. I don't know. It's like air conditioning, some things got to be done. But fundamentally, uh, we're right at the door. We're breathing on it, folks. Um, it'll probably be next month. But still, we're really close. And uh, I'm excited. It's going to be good for the church. We're close. A lot closer than we were a month or two ago when we thought we were within a couple of weeks. So, we're close. But we, we got to get the county to cooperate on the CO That's in the shrubbery thing. They're wanting us to put in all the shrubbery and trees when we've only built one of our four buildings. Right? That doesn't make sense, does it? Because now, you put that around the building where you're going to build a building later, guess what you're going to do? Destroy all the plants that you just planted. That's not going to work. So, they got to show a little bit of mercy on that, right? Common sense, yeah. Yeah, that would help. But it is a count. All right, guys. We're going to resolve all conflict today. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we're going to talk about, I want us to talk about these top few, and then we're going to get into reading some of these lower down. Let's talk about, just for a moment, how conflict in the Beatitudes work. Matthew 5, 1 through 12 talks about the Beatitudes. They're poor in spirit. Uh, they're those who mourn. They're those who are weak. Those who are hungry and thirst after righteousness. The merciful, uh, the pure in heart, and peacemakers, and then those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Most of those top ones aren't so much affected by conflict, although poor in spirit certainly helps. It's a person who's absolutely destitute of spirit. Now, you listen to the world, and I'll tell you that you shouldn't have that spirit because that sounds like you're, you're giving up. Well, that's not the point of this. It's talking about the joy that comes from the Lord. And mourning sounds like it wouldn't create joy, but it does. Meekness doesn't sound like it creates joy, but it does. Hungry and thirsting after righteousness also does, and so does being pure, being a peacemaker. But... Persecution or someone attacking you or pursuing you is kind of what we're talking about in conflict. And yet, he says, that's a blessing. So the fact that someone would actually say ugly things or want to argue with you because you're a Christian is a blessing. It's a blessing. So not all conflicts are going to be solved because... No matter who you are, uh, the righteous are going to be persecuted. That's just the way it is. There's going to be ugly things said to us and about us because we believe stuff that they don't believe, and they don't want to. They don't want you pushing that on them. It's going to be. It's going to be said. So that's the first one. The second one is the armor of God, and in that, He tells you to be strong and to understand that we're not having conflict with people. All your conflicts are not with people. Well, I know it's a person. It's that person. No, 
Your actual conflict is with who, class? With who? Yourself and the devil. Self and the devil, absolutely. Absolutely. So it, it's a spiritual thing with principalities and powers. That's why you need to be strong spiritually. And the way you are to defend yourself is with truth, righteousness, peace, faith, knowing you got salvation, and the Word of God. That's how you do it. That's how you deal with all these attacks against our faith. You do it with truth. Don't say something. And by the way, I, I really appreciate Sean yesterday pointing out truth isn't just facts. It's also about trustworthiness and our trustworthiness. But you, so you be trustworthy. Not just a person of fact, but a person <coughs> that can be trusted. Uh, righteousness, live right, be peaceful, have faith, know your relationship with the Lord is sound and you got salvation. And then use the word of God. All right, then it talks about the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So those nine qualities are actually all together kind of one quality. Right? All nine qualities are really kind of one quality. What is that? The spirit of God. You know? It is the fruit of the spirit. I mean, it's not really one thing. If you have the spirit, you produce all these things, and that's the fruit of the spirit. So you should be a person of love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness, and gentleness and self-control. That's who you should be. So you ought to be able to handle conflict better than the average person. That's the point I'm bringing out here. And then the last one here, that before we get into these individual things, is the divine nature. And I love this right here. First Peter, I mean, Second Peter, chapter one, verses four through eleven. It talks about he's given us, uh, he has divine power, and he's given us divine power. And he's given us a divine nature. So the nature we have as a Christian is not by you. You didn't really produce it. You didn't teach it. You didn't create it. You didn't invent it. You say, well, I've done a lot to be a Christian. Big whoop. None of it came from you. You had, if you'd have been left to yourself, you'd be grinding a rock right now to stab somebody with it. This has all been his influence upon us. The improvement that you see in society is God's influence upon society. There was a time when man never thought good. Every thought of his heart, his imagination was evil continually. It's not true anymore. You actually have good thoughts. You can, whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever they, but where did that come from? It came from him. Okay, so the only reason that you're worth anything today in comparison to that is his divine nature has been implanted into you through his word and through his spirit. That's what made you such a wonderful citizen today. That's it. Without that, not too much. So involved in that is faith and virtue. Virtue is a wonderful thing. That's moral excellence. Moral excellence. And yes, I believe church members have moral excellence. I believe they're excellent morally. And knowledge of God. Temperance. It's holding yourself without letting yourself run crazy. Uh, patience. Godliness. By the way, godliness is, has its own power. Virtue has its own power. It's real. It's not make believe. And it's supernatural. It really does, because it affects the supernatural. What, who does God tend to listen to in prayer? The righteous, exactly. So there's power in it. And by the way, there's power in wickedness, and it's supernatural. And yes, the devil does work with it. The more wicked you get, the more wicked you can be. It's a spiral down. There's a spiral upward called godliness, and there's a spiral down called evil. And it's real. It has power. But also brotherly kindness and charity, that's something that just keeps us together and avoids conflict. Now, let's, okay, that's just summary stuff. I'd love for you to sit and read all of that because conflict and all those things are, those things affect conflict 
maybe more than what we're fixing to look at. But now we want to look at conflict and maturity and in compromise and uh, sacrifice and speech. So I need three readers. I need 1 Corinthians 2, verses 6 through 16. I need then 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 4, and then 1 Corinthians 14, 20. 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 16. Right there, got your brother Keith. And then 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 4. I need a reader for that. Right there. And then I got 1 Corinthians 14, just verse 20. One verse. There you go. There you go. Now let's read that and talk about that just a minute, and we'll move on. Talking about how we're going to face conflict, that's for sure. I mean, the world hates us. Nobody else does. So how do we deal with it? First Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6 through 16. How do we see wisdom and all that are perfect? Or dare not the wisdom of this world, nor the first of this world, that comes to God. But we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world to our glory. Which none of the persons in this world knew, but had they known, they would not have crucified the end of the Lord. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed you know, unto us by the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man puts to teach us, but which the Holy Ghost speaks of, comparing certain things with spirit. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, which he may we don't want to get too deeply into that. I'm going to go ahead and let's now who, who had 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 4. Let's read that because they're in the same context and it's critical to the understanding. Okay. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, but until now you were not able to receive it. And even now you are still not able, for you are still carnal. For with those, for where there are envy and strife and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of the Paulus, are you not carnal? Okay, so what he's really talking about here then is this idea of really being spiritual as opposed to being carnal or fleshly in our thinking. And if, if you're not thinking spiritually, uh, Carnal mind is the guy that flips off the other guy for cutting him off. <clears throat> Carnal mind is, you touch me, I'm going to hit you. Right? You've gone too far. You got, you got in my space. You said something too harsh. You're fixing to find out. Right? That's carnal minded guys, right? And so that's when we just go back, revert to we're not much different than an animal. Uh, pretty like a beast, and your wife would agree with that. Uh, yes. And we're not nice. And it's carnal. And so when there's a division, like they were starting to be at Corinth, the natural person doesn't see beyond what's happening. They don't see that they're causing a split. They gotta win, you know. It's that kind of thing. I've got to just win. I, you, you, we, we're in this church. Praise the Lord, up until now. And if you check, did I knock that out for saying that so loud? I apologize. So, but 
this church up until now, unless one of you new guys do it, has never had a church split. Never. Never. Not going to either. We're not going to have one. The reason is because the spiritually minded people remain in control. There's always a natural mind, a carnal mind in the congregation. And there's always one wanting to cause trouble. I assure you. Some of them don't like me. Can you believe that? But no. But no, that's the reality. That is, I mean, that is reality. And if you think different, so when somebody comes up to you and whispers to you about some problem we're having in the church, you ought to realize who you're listening to probably at that moment. You're probably not looking, listening to a spiritually minded person. You're probably listening to a person being controlled by their flesh. And they're about winning. They, they will mention to you spiritual concepts. They will sometimes try to make it about a doctrinal matter. But when someone has to squeeze a passage to make it about a doctrinal matter to get what they want, you know they suck that out of their thumb. And they're trying to manipulate you to get you on side with them to be in a fight. Run from them if you can. And try not to have too much dealings with them. Because all they're doing is thinking about winning. It's not about the spiritual matters. They think it is. They think they are. Because that's the way pride does. Pride's right. If you don't believe me, just ask me. I'm always right. So pride... This is a joke. But pride's right, right? Right? So when you think you're always right, guess what we know about you? You're like the rest of us. You have a pride problem. Who has a pride problem? Every person in this room. Who has a lust problem? Every person in this room. Lust of flesh, lust of eyes, boastful pride of life. Who has trouble with those three things? Every person in the room. And if you did, don't admit that, he's got you. But if you're willing to admit I'm struggling with all of them, then you're less likely going to have a problem that's going to cause a problem for everybody else. Everybody struggles with all three things. You say, well, I don't have a lust problem. Yeah, you do. You just haven't recognized it yet. It may not be a lust for a woman, guys, but it's a lust for something. You want something. And our problem is we want something. And that want gets in our way of a lot of good things. So be careful. All right, so now, fleshly, it's not spiritual. Next one is 1 Corinthians 14, verse 20. Brethren, do not be children in understanding. However, in malice be babes, but in understanding be mature. So, mature people understand babes want to hurt you. Babes will hurt you. So, if we're having conflict, if you're having conflict with a baby, right? I'm going to say something here that just totally uncalled for. It sounds like something a preacher would say. I've noticed the further back and the less involved people are, the more they squall like a baby in the back seat. The more engaged they are, the more likely they're sitting in the front seat helping us get down the road. And the more mature they are. You don't engage and you squall baby stuff. Get engaged. Drive the car occasionally. We'd be glad for you to. Amen? I'd be glad for you to do what I do. Take over. You want to preach? Come on up here. Amen. I'd love to take a Sunday off. Yes. You say, you don't want love doing what you do it? I love doing what I'm doing, but I love somebody else doing it even more. Amen? I do, and you do too. Amen? Because variety is the spice of life. The last thing you want to do is hear me every single Sunday. Or anybody else for that matter, right? You get tired of it. But grow up and understand. Be an understanding person, not a malice person. All right, let's do the next section. We're talking about compromise. Compromise. So you, you want to have conflicts, but you don't want to compromise your ethics. Well, that's a wonderful goal. 
Let's see if we can talk about how compromise and conflict come together. Uh, I need a reader for, we're not going to read uh, all of this. What I want it, I'm, I'm going to have to pick and choose because this is really too much. I tell you what, we're going to pick up, we won't read Romans 14, that's just way too much. Uh, let's read, uh, we'll read the last two. Let's just do the last two. Let's do 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 23. Who would do that for me? Right there, yes, Brother Key does that. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 19 through 23. And then 1 Corinthians 10, this is 10 verses, 23 through 30. Yes, sir, Brother Key. All right, let's all turn to 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 23. For though I, I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win the more, and to the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might win Jesus. And to those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without the law, as without law, not being without law toward God, but under law toward Christ, that I might win those who are without law. To the weak, I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partaker of them. Let me summarize real quick. I'll come back to that. Hold your scripture because I may need to read it again. But I want to just, Romans 14 is basically just a summary idea is not to take advantage of somebody who has a weaker conscience than you or who disagrees with you over things like days and some events that we get involved in. Eating meat, stuff like that. Just don't judge your brother that you deem as weaker. That's an easy thing to do, right? Well, anybody disagrees with me, but you're supposed to be weaker. No, that's, that's not. And then 1 Corinthians 6, 1 through 8, is rather uh, teaches the idea of not going to law with each other, rather be wrong. Obviously, that's talking about small matters. It's not talking about big matters. There are matters that you can't just look the other way. Sometimes you have to go to law. For example, if a brother in this church molests your child, we don't just expect you to have a conversation with him. We expect you to call the police and prosecute him. And we will support you in that process. You get it? And that is not a forbidden for every kind of legal thing. That's just not the case. If someone steals your car and they're a member of this congregation, we expect you to prosecute them. But make it up with them if you can. If you can settle with them and talk, that's great. But until then, call the police. Right? And so if someone rooks you in this congregation in a business deal, yes, you can sue them. But if you can work it out before that, try. But if it's they rooked you for $400,000, you better sue them. Because they didn't accidentally do $400,000. You understand what I'm saying? There's a, so you, there are certain things you can. All right. And then 1 Corinthians said, but try to be the type of person that you'd rather be wrong over small matters and not bring them up again. If you can do that. Right? Somebody insults you a little bit in the foyer. We don't have to have a meeting with the elders and them. Right? Okay. And then 1 Corinthians 8 is really talking about how knowledge props up, but love builds up. And so in that text, he's talking about eating meats off for idols and that sort of thing. Then that you shouldn't do anything that offends your other brother's faith if you can keep from it. And that is an absolute, that's not an absolute rule that you can never offend your, your brother's faith and what they believe. Because sometimes your brother believes something ridiculously stupid. That happens. So you can offend that, but you try not to, right? Because you don't want to cause them their faith. So you try to do, that's the reason a lot of times we don't do things here that others find offensive. We try not to. Do we get by, there has been a debate in this church about hand clapping. We have been, you're going to look out there, you're over there smiling, you know that. So way back when I first got here, there was this big furor about clapping. What you, I don't think most of you remember this, but you'll remember it. <laughs> about clapping in baptism. 
Remember that? And that was a big issue with some people. Okay? Today, we just, just we like heathens. We just went ahead and clapped. Anyway, so, <laughs> so you try not to offend people, right? If that's an issue with something, you try not to offend people. But obviously, they're more heathens in our church than spiritual. <laughs> All right. All right, back to 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 23. What is the situation in that text? What is Paul trying to drive across about how to get along with people? What's he saying? So if you go, let's say you're going to have a Bible study with somebody. Is it a good idea to get in an argument with them? Have you ever reached somebody that you were in a full-on heated argument with? You ever baptized anybody that you was full-on heated argument with? You ever taught anybody and you're in a full-on heated biblical argument and they succumb to your great wisdom and the way you handle the verse even though they were mad at you and you baptize them before they even get something? I've never done that. Every time I've ever been in a Bible study that somebody's voice got a little higher, that was almost the end of it right there. In fact, we're pretty much done right then. You can just about mark it down. I've been in Bible studies here with people who got shouted. <laughs> okay, literally. Believe me, we did not even go on, nevertheless, convert that person. Because that didn't happen. People are not going to be shouted at in their home. You're not going to talk down to me in my house, right? Because there's the door right over there, buddy. This belongs to me, right? Well, maybe me and the bank. But still, <laughs> it's mine, right? You don't control this, right? Be nice in here. That's the thing. All right, so what is he talking then about, about when he was talking to a person under the law, he did what? He did what? Don't be afraid. I just didn't hear it. What? He identified him. He identified him. He became like he's under the law. Somebody without the law, what he did? He identified with it, right? He became like a, he thought, he thought about the whole situation when he's talking to him like somebody who was without the law. That's what you do, and that's what you do no matter what the disagreement, what the chasm is. You try to see it from their perspective, right? I don't care what the topic is. If you only see stuff from your perspective, you're never going to work out any conflict. Okay, let me give you one that's real. Men, look at your wife and think, how in the world does she put up with me? Think about that the next time you're about to have an argument. What in the world is she doing with me? I can't even imagine. And by the way, ladies, you can imagine why she's with you. Is that what you're saying, Clay? <laughs> yeah, I, sometimes I look at this. <laughs> no. So, and vice versa, ladies, I know y'all were the jewel of the Nile. Get it? But I gotta let you know something. You know, if you get hot and sweaty, your feet stink too. So, <laughs> right? But you try, ladies, to see what it might be like to be married to a woman. Now, I know you're beautiful, wonderful. Awesome, right? Everything. But I gotta be honest with you. Sometimes we think we're crazy. <laughs> but we don't say that. And there ain't no preacher in the world would ever admit that. But we really think you're crazy. And I don't mean crazy like, well, she's had a crazy thought. I mean like, this is bizarre. <laughs> And, and, and your man will tell you that he ain't going to admit it to you because I'm going to tell my wife. I'm going to tell her everything I said in class was a lie. But, <laughs> but there are moments when the men will step back up. What's going on? What? what? That's something I ain't understanding here. <laughs> Don't amen it, gentlemen. Just go. <laughs> Swallow that. Bro. All right. So what, I, what I'm trying to say to you is, though, so when you're dealing with somebody you're struggling to understand, try to see it from their perspective. 
What must it be like? Well, that won't work, brother. You, you got to answer that. See, he just spoke up when you should have shut up. She's a good girl, and she's better than you. That's not, I'm not saying that to be funny. Bonnie's a much better person than you are, too. Anyway, so. Yeah, I'm safe. <laughs> Except over there. I'm in trouble, I think. <laughs> so. What was I saying? Because I'm in trouble now. <laughs> All right, so you adapt, right? And you try to see it from their perspective. And so, gentlemen, the best way to do that is take a pause. Because they've... That because they're in communication on both sides of their brain, and we're one, maybe the other one occasionally, but we're like, one, you know, we're like, oh, yeah. Because we get in our boxes, and we're like, I was talking about toothpaste, and she was got upset about the children. <laughs> Where did that come from? Right? So, what you have to do is then listen, gentlemen, listen for a little bit. Don't raise your hand now. You, no. <laughs> John says, you going to walk in deep water? Come on out. Come on out. John says, say it. Say it. Yeah. Chris, he's sitting right there. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Courage, Willow. So I was just saying, um, <laughs> with you trying to see things from their perspective, you have to actually understand and know who you really are and yourself. Oh, that's good. To, to, so you see it, try to see it from their perspective, uh, but don't, I guess, allow yourself to be taken over if you don't know who you really are. You know, you, have that's, you know, that's that's probably one of the deepest things uh, we've ever heard in this class. That's actually quite good. And it goes to John chapter 13. In John chapter 13, before Jesus got up and washed the feet of his disciples, what does it say? He said he knew who he was. And he knew where he was going. If you know who you are, and you know where you're going, you don't have a problem being humble. So be humble and adapt. Right? Try to see it from their perspective. And try to minister to them on the level that they need it. And that applies to your mate, but it applies to everybody. If you're a boss over somebody, try to see what it might be like to work for you. Right? It, it might not be the Disneyland, you know? You know? It might just not be tough. It's tough. I mean, it's easy. All right. Uh, we need to read now 1 Corinthians 10, verses 23 through 33, but that's going to be with the last we have time for. All things are lost. see the big picture you know winning isn't what it's about 
in the sense of winning the argument or but their soul. The soul of the people around you is the big picture. And so uh, that includes everybody. And so I need to be willing to just not say some stuff. I don't bring it up. So I, you bought back in the day, all the meat just about was offered to some god before it was put in the marketplace at some point. If you asked about it, they'd tell you, but most people weren't that religious anyway. It was just something they kind of did, like going to the, the, you know, to a football game. It, it's just what they did. And so the meat was offered that way. If you don't say anything about it, they're not saying anything about it. You buy the meat, go home and eat it, right? That's the way it was. If you say something about it, say, yeah, this was offered to Jupiter or whatever, you know. Now you've got that. Now you got to deal with that. And the people who see you here see you messing with that. Now they've heard you and they see you buying stuff for Jupiter. And, and now you got to deal with that. So when you're dealing with somebody, don't go out of your way to offend them. Just don't. You say, well, what about what we believe? Yeah, believe what you believe. But don't go out of your way to offend them. You don't have to shove your political party down somebody's throat. You don't have to talk about everything controversial. You can talk about, hey, it's a nice weather. I got great kid pictures I'll show you. You can do that. You can be polite and nice and get along because some of the stuff we in conflicts about we ask for it we stuck our tongue out at somebody and thought we were being smart so go and sit no more we're done